Welcome. In this video, we'll be discussing list functions for GRC calculations. We'll start off by showing how list values come from related object fields. We'll show how to work with multi-value fields, how to create and manipulate lists, and finally how to apply functions to each item in a list. We'll begin by showing how lists get pulled in as part of related object fields. To start, we'll take a look at loss events. I'll select on an existing loss event, and we'll want to take a look. So the calculation we'll be taking a look at will calculate the net loss for this particular loss event based off of the summation of all monetary value that was lost as part of a child object called loss impact. And once it figures out the summation of all of the monetary value that was lost, it'll subtract all the monetary value that was able to be recouped as part of the loss recovery. So we'll see that uh, manifest itself in this field. Net loss equals uh, the gross loss minus recovery amount. Gross loss is going to get set. It's going to be the summation of all of the child loss impacts that we see here in this grid. So all of these add up to 500,000. And the recovery amount comes from the summation of all of the child loss recovery values. So here there's only one, so it's going to be 500,000 minus 10,000. These two fields get us the 490,000. So what does that actually look like in a calculation? For that, we'll go ahead uh, and go to the calculations menu item. We'll go to the loss event calculation, which is um, in OpenVis 8.2 out of the box. Everything from this set net loss uh, operation above is default out of the box for this particular calculation. Everything below we'll get into a little bit later in this uh, tutorial. However, what I want to bring our focus to here is um, this sum function, which is something that you can do if you have a list. So this loss uh, operation here is coming from loss impact actual loss. So Loss impact, of course, as we just saw, is a child object of loss event. And since you can have multiple loss impacts, all of the values from the children are, are going to get pulled in as part of a list. So what's happening here is we have this if exists sum of all child loss. Um, so if exists is just translates to if the calculation engine can perform this, then do the following uh, condition which is this uh, set sum so sum loss sum set all up otherwise it'll revert to the summation of the estimated loss but that's basically just there to kind of uh, uh, show you how sum can be applied to a list in this particular case coming from uh, child objects so now that we've seen that I'm going to go through uh, the following examples um, showing other functions that can be applied to lists. So um, the first three I want to highlight is, we'll go back to our loss event because I'm going to show you what's going to happen. So I'm going to set the value of causal category and, co and causal subcategory. And what that's going to do in the calculation is I'm going to combine both of these. So they're both multi-valued uh, fields, enumerated fields. And I'm going to combine uh, the currently selected value and I'm going to output it into another multi-valued list field here. Then in the second example, I'm going to take it and rather than putting it into another list field, I'm going to put it into a string field. I'm going to show what that looks like. And then um, subsequently, I'm going to show how to take both of them and apply it to a string field with some formatting. So uh, in this example, the second one, we're going to actually apply a, a prefix string to every item in the list. And this, this one over here is basically just uh, Format it so we're going to take a string and we're going to just apply it, um, concatenate that with uh, the value of the list. So let's take a look to see what that looks like in the actual uh, calculation. So to join the list is simply just doing an append. So we have the original list and then we're going to append another value. This can be um, a list, it can be item one, item two, item three. Um, whatever you decide to append to it. So that's the first one. Um, and then in this example, we're actually going to be applying a prefix string to every item in the list. So the result of this append 
is a list. And when you take a list and you add something to it, you're basically performing that operation on every item in the list. So what we're going to see is prefix underscore applied to every item in the list. So that's the second example. And then the third one is we're going to show how to, um, if we want to take the value of the list and, and combine that with actual string text and output it to a string field, this is how you do it. So uh, since the list is coming from this append, we're going to apply the format function, which basically uh, turns this list into a string. And then when you do the add of this other string, we get one, uh, one overall string. So let's take a look to see what that looks like in this particular um, object. Go select process, I'll select people. I'll select um, do people employee error. So as we see, this list output field is combining all uh, three of them. This string output field is where we actually applied a prefix string to every item in the list. So we'll see that it has that. And then uh, the string output field has, um, it's the string version of, of the entire thing. So um, that's what we have there. So that's kind of how you can see th three different variations of how to combine lists, manipulate lists into a list field, a string, as well as formatting. So uh, the following things I'm going to show in this tutorial is how to use the at index to retrieve a particular item from the list at a particular index. And the index in this case is going to be zero based. How to count the number of items in a list, how to perform an average, how to get the max value, how to remove an item from a list, how to um, apply the round function to each item in the list, as well as uh, square the values of each item in the list. So to do that, what I'm going to use is this um, Boolean that'll basically, for the purposes of the demo and to make it uh, time sensitive, I'm going to use this uh, value here, uh, change it from false to true, that will actually trigger all of these things to calculate. But before we do, let me show you how we actually um, define these uh, expressions. So the force calc is an input field. That's the Boolean I just showed. Um, and if we take a look at the at expression here, uh, in order to get a particular item from a list at a particular index, um, you do at, give it the list, and then the index number. So in this case, one actually represents the second item in the list. Um, and then if the Boolean isn't set, then it'll just um, output no value there. So that's for the at. Uh, the count is pretty simple as well. A count is basically you uh, do count, parentheses, and then the list. So loss here is coming from a list of all child uh, actual loss from loss impact, but um, it could be from any other list as well. And the average, so average takes um, a list as well. So very similar average parentheses and then the list. The max value also is very similar. You do max, then give it the, the list. And then remove. So this is a little bit different in the sense that here, um, rather than refer to a list that comes from a, a related object, I'm actually creating a list on the fly. So to create the list on the fly, you do list, parentheses, and then all of the items uh, that you would like to be included in the list. Um, here I have all string values. They don't need to be all of the same type. It could be a string, it could be decimal, it could be an integer, etc. It could even be a list of a list. Um, but in this case, the syntax for remove is the first item is uh, the list that you're removing, and then the subsequent parameters are the items that you would like to remove. In this case, I'm just removing one, but it could be uh, item one, item two, etc. Et so that's for the remove, the round function. So in this case, uh, I'm also highlighting that not only am I, am I doing a round function on every item of the loss uh, list, however, I'm also taking that that loss list, which is a, a list of currency values, and I'm showing here that I can actually apply do some pre-processing on the list to get the base amount of 
uh, a list of currencies. And once I get that, then I'm going to show that I can actually just perform the round on that. So it's this example here is showing how to concatenate, or sorry, how to chain multiple functions on a list to get your desired output. And finally, the last function that we'll see for lists is square. So again, here I'm creating a list on the fly. Uh, however, it could be another list coming from a related object. And I'm going to perform a square function on each item in the list. So it'll square each item in that list. So that's kind of a lot, but um, we're covering all of the functions that we have for uh, lists. So to trigger all of this, I'm going to select this true. Um, button here and I'm going to select off this field that's going to cause the uh, preview for calc to, to run on everything so let's take a look so if you recall the at index was taking the value from causal category a multi-valued field and it's taking the first um, index of one which is actually the second item so we see people show up there list count was uh, getting the count for this particular field which is three the average was performing an average on the actual loss, which is um, this value here. So it's, it's all of these three, three, three things, adds them all up and performs the average. Max loss impact was getting the max from all these child loss impacts. Um, there's also min as well. Um, it's just changing min to max, or max to min. The remove function uh, that we have here, we had all three of these things in addition to Kiwi. It's removing Kiwi, that's the result here. The round function. So if you recall, we have this currency value that has decimal places. Um, and you'll see here, it's um, all the decimal places have been removed. So anything 0.5 and above gets rounded up, anything below that gets rounded down. And finally, the square function uh, performs square of each of the values from one to 10, and we see the, the output here. So with that, um, we've covered all of the different functions that you can perform on uh, lists. Uh, we've talked about related object fields. We've shown how to work with multiple uh, valued fields. We showed how to create and manipulate lists, and we showed how to apply functions to items in a list. We hope you found this uh, video useful, and we invite you to follow along with some of our other tutorials as well. Thank you.